today in this video I'm going to show you how to solve linear equations. Now this is my second video on solving linear equations so if you haven't seen the first one maybe you want to check that one out first. So in this one today I'm going to be showing you some harder equations and I'm going to be also showing you ones that have the unknown, for example x or y, on both sides of the equal sign. So let's have a look at the first example. I've got x terms on the left and also the right. So our goal is to put all the letters, so the x's, on one side of the equals and everything that's not to do with x, so the numbers, on the other side. So it doesn't matter which side we move them to, but I would advise you to always try and move the smaller term because that way you'll keep the x's positive, which just makes your life a little bit easier. So in this one up here, the smaller x term is this one, 5x. So that's the one I'm going to move. So I'm going to put it on the right-hand side of the equals. So I'm going to have x's on the right-hand side, which means I want to have numbers on the left. So I'm just going to leave that minus 8 where it is there. Whenever terms move across the equal sign, you need to remember that they change sign. So if something used to be positive, like this 5x, it will change to a negative and vice versa. So underneath, I'm just going to write down what that gives me now. So the minus 8 hasn't moved, so I'm just going to write that down. The 6x hasn't moved either, so that also stays the same. But that positive 5x, when it moves, remember I said it changes to a negative. So now we can just simplify this. On the right hand side, I've got two x terms that I can subtract. If I've got six x's and then I take away five of them, it leaves me with one x. Well, I don't need to write one x, I can just write x, that's the same thing. So we've actually already solved the first equation. The value of x is negative eight. All right, on to the next one. So again, we want to put y's on one side, numbers on the other. And I'm going to try to move the smaller y term in order to keep the y's positive. So this one, negative 3y, is smaller than 8y. So I'm going to move that one. And I'm going to put it on the left-hand side of the equals this time. Which means I want all the numbers on the right-hand side. So I'm going to move that negative 31 to the right. So remember, only the ones that are moving are the ones that change sign. So this 8y is fine, it stays where it is, it doesn't change. However, this negative 3y changes to a plus, a positive. Then I've got the equal sign and the 13 that hasn't moved anywhere. And then the negative 31 that changes to a plus. And then, just like before, I'm going to write down underneath what I've now got. So if I've got 8y and I add 3 more y, that gives me 11y. And on the right-hand side of the equals, if I add those numbers together, I get 44. So we've still got another step because we need to find one single y, the value of y. And we've got 11y. So we need to reverse what's happening to y. y is being multiplied by 11, so the opposite is to divide. So I'm going to divide by 11 over here because then 11 divided by 11 is just 1 and I'm left with 1y. But remember, you need to divide by 11 on both sides of the equation. You've got to keep the equation balanced. And 44 divided by 11, well that is just 4. So I have solved that equation. Now, number 3, just the same as before, try to move the smaller y term if you can. But like I said, it doesn't matter if you move it the other way, you'll get exactly the same answer. So this one is smaller, negative y is smaller than 1y, so I'm going to move that one to the right hand side which means I want the numbers on the left hand side so I'm going to move that negative 4 over to the left so then underneath I write down what I now have so the 2 hasn't changed this negative 4 changes to a plus 4 then I've got the equal sign this y didn't move so that stays the same but this negative y changes to a plus y Right, I'm just going to carry on this equation over here. So now we just write down what we've got so far. So 2 plus 4 is 6. Then I've got the equals. 1y plus 1y is 2y. So the last step, the opposite of multiplying by 2, is to divide by 2. And remember to do the same thing to both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. On the right-hand side, where we do the opposite, it always cancels, which makes sense because 2 divided by 2 is just 1, so we're left with 1y. 
and on the left hand side, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So they're solving when you have the unknowns on both sides of the equal sign. Now I'm, I'm going to find some harder linear equations for us to have a go at to finish. Okay. Okay, so on to example number four. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of the brackets. And remember, when you see brackets, it means multiply. So you have to multiply all of this bracket by two. So two multiplied by x is two x, and two multiplied by one is just positive two. Now do exactly the same thing with this one. So you're going to multiply that bracket by three. So three multiplied by x is three x, and 3 multiplied by negative 5 is negative 15. Well now it's just like the ones from earlier. We need to put x terms on one side, numbers on the other, and I'm going to try and move the smaller x term. So I'm going to move this 2x over to the right hand side of this equation, which means I want numbers on the left. So I'm going to move that negative 15 over there. Now underneath, I'm just going to write down what that gives me. So the positive 2 is still positive 2. I don't need to write the plus in front, it's fine like that. And the negative 15 turns into a plus 15. Then I've got the equal sign and the 3x, which didn't move. But this positive 2x changes to a negative. And now I'm going to calculate. So 2 plus 15 is just 17. And on the right hand side, if I've got three x's and I take away two of them, I'm left with one x. So there we have it, we've solved that equation. All right, on to number five. Well, the first thing I want to do in this question is get rid of this fraction. And remember, when you see this nine and a four, it means divide by four. So we need to do the opposite. So the opposite of dividing by four is multiplying. And remember, you must do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So here where we do the opposite, it always cancels, which makes sense because when you're dividing by four, it's like multiplying by a quarter, and four quarters gives one. That's why they cancel each other out. So I'm left with three brackets, x minus two. And on the right hand side, remember you need to multiply both of these terms by four. So four x multiplied by four is 16 x. And negative 8 multiplied by 4 is negative 32. And now it's like question 4. We need to multiply out the brackets. So multiply that 3 with this bracket here. So 3 multiplied by x is 3x. Three, 3 multiplied by negative 2 is negative 6. The right hand side is just fine like that. And now we need to put x terms on one side, numbers on the other. So remember, try to move the smaller x term. So the smaller one is this one, 3x. So I'm going to move that over here so that it's with the 16x, which means I want the numbers on the other side of the equals. So I'm just going to carry on this one over here. So this negative 32 is going to change to a positive 32. So I'm going to write that down on the left. This is still negative 6, so I can write that down. And it doesn't matter which order you put those in, as long as the 6 is still negative and the 32 is positive. Then you've got the equal sign and the 16x, which hasn't moved. And finally, you've got this positive 3x, which changes to a negative. And now I'm going to calculate. So 32 take away 6 is 26. And on the right hand side, 16x minus 3x is 13x. So maybe you can spot already the value of x. If you can't, well the opposite of multiplying by 13 is to divide. Remember to do the same thing on both sides of the equation. So on the right hand side, 13 divided by 13 is just 1. So I'm left with 1x and that cancels. And on the left hand side, 26 divided by 13 is just 2. Okay, so I've solved that equation there. So, there you go. There's some harder solving linear equations. Let me see if I can find one more really difficult one to finish. Okay, so now for the final question. 
So this time we've got two fractions that we need to get rid of. So remember to get rid of the fraction you must multiply by the denominator. So to get rid of this one we have to multiply by 4 and remember if you multiply by 4 on one side you have to do the same on the other. And to get rid of this one we need to multiply by 6. So we're also multiplying by 6 on both sides of the equation. So let's look at this carefully. This times by 4 cancels this 4 and this times by 6 here gets rid of this 6. So what's left over is multiplying the left hand side by 6 and multiplying the right hand side by 4. So I'm going to do that. So 6 multiplied by 2x is just 12x and 6 multiplied by 3 is positive 18, so plus. Then I've got the equal sign, and now I'm going to multiply the right hand, right hand side by 4. So 4x multiplied by 4 is 16x, and negative 2 multiplied by 4 is negative 8. Well, oh, and I've just forgotten to write the x in, so let me squeeze that in there. So now it's just like what we did earlier, putting x terms on one side, numbers on the other. I'm going to try and move the smaller x term, so I'm going to move the 12x over to the right, which means I want the numbers on the left. So I'm now going to write out what that gives me. So the positive 18 hasn't moved, so it's still positive. This negative 8 changes to a plus. Then I've got the equal sign, and that's 16x that hasn't moved. And finally, this positive 12x, which changes to a negative. And now I'm going to calculate. So 18 plus 8 is 26. On the right hand side, 16x minus 12x leaves me with just 4x. And now the last step to get rid of this 4, the opposite is to divide by 4. So divide both sides of your equation by 4. So on the, on the right, 4 divided by 4 is just 1, so I'm left with 1x. And on the left, 26 divided by 4, well, I can't divide that number by 4, so I could write it like that. But I don't really want to leave it just like this because I can simplify this fraction. These are both even numbers, so it means I can divide them both by 2. So 26 divided by 2 is 13, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So x is 13 over 2, or you might want to write that as 6.5. Either of those are fine. Okay, so that's solving linear equations. Something I just want to point out, something I've done all the way through, is I've shown all my working out. Now, it's always important to show your working out. If you make a mistake somewhere and you get the final answer wrong, if you've got all your working out and most of it's correct, you can still pick up important working marks in your exam. So try to get into the habit of showing your working out. I also think you're less likely to make a mistake if you do that. So uh, there we go, solving linear equations and bye-bye uh, for me.